Hello my friends, welcome to Mike's Retro Corner. Today we have something that I've had for quite some time and it's a Sega Game Gear. Now, well I bought these from a boot sale many many moons ago and they were working when I put them away. Now they've been in storage for some time. So when I got them out, these screens didn't actually work anymore. Um, I managed to get one kind of working, but in reality, you have to push down quite hard on the ribbon cable and no end of resoldering the cable has made it work. So I have ordered a screen from AliExpress, which turned up actually a week ago. So I have it here now. So let's dive in and have a little look. So I'm going to switch you over to my phone cam. So here is the game gear at the moment. I've already removed the screen and I had previously recapped this. But uh, what I just want to show you is it is a working game gear. So the, there is actually sound that comes. I didn't realize my mic was so far away. Um, there is sound that comes from this. So if I switch this on. So it is, it's a working game gear. So the lot, yeah, it's I think it definitely flashes when the battery is starting to go low. That uh, the game gear is definitely a working game gear. So I'm going to remove these ribbon, well, not ribbon connectors, but connectors. Put that to one side and there's the logic board. So as you can see, the I had previously did this, uh, re recapped all these. Uh, more professionally than I've seen other people do it and they just leave the legs quite long and leave the capacitors dangling around all over the place. But I wanted to do it as neat as I could. Um, and so that it didn't turn out too bad, I don't think. The, the quality of that camera is not as, as I'd like it to be, but um, it, it all should be fine. But we we'll turn it around. So the board, needs to kind of connect to the solder points around the bottom here where the original screen was and a couple around here as well. So what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll pop out the board and have a quick look at this, what we've got here. So it came packaged in this little box, um, come with a spare screen and Grossbrook cover. And this is the, the actual unit. So the screen's already plugged into it, but I think we'll unplug that for now and uh, get that moved out the way if it's uh, easy enough to do. Let's uh, have a little look at that. So. Yeah, the quality of that's not, not the best. So we want to take this off. So I will use one of my little screwdrivers to get that cleaned up. So, so it looks like it's just a pop connector. Hopefully it's just a pop connector. No, it doesn't want to pop. It really does not want to go. Nope, that's way in there. I'm not sure I want to uh, force that to come out. So we may have to just do it with the screen still connected, which is a bit, it's a bit rubbish to be fair. Okay, so looking from the instructions of what there are of them, the screen will sit this way around with the board lining up to certain holes that are on here. And there's already pre-solder, well, bits that you have to solder and they've marked down on here, on here where you have to solder as well. So let's make sure we've got this in the right location. And very important, you match up the holes. So match the hole up on both sides. Okay, so if I move over to my top screen, 
So this is the screen I purchased from AliExpress. It came quite quickly in about two weeks. So I was quite happy with that in all honesty. It came at the same time that the Game Boy Color screen that I ordered come. Um, that we have some instructions here. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and remove loads and loads of components. All I've done is remove the coil for the transformer circuit. So if I pull that up, I've removed this uh, the coil that was in this location. So all this power circuit for the screen should no longer function. I've also removed the two fuses that were on either side and I've removed the cathode tube as well, the light in there. So I've got the board in place and I really want to kind of solder the connectors which will stop the board from moving around. Now what I have noticed is these solder points, they're not very close, they're quite far away from where they need to be, but as long as these holes line up I think I'm okay. And if you look here as well, if I can get it in the screen, ah, it's not going to focus, is it? Let me turn this around for you. It has some bits you have to literally solder to, and they're tiny. So this is going to be it's going to be interesting, and I'm hoping that I will have this in the right location so they match where they need to go. So let's get this secured. Let's get a start. I think we're okay. I think we're okay of what we've done. I think if it's gonna work, it's gonna work. And if it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. And I just have to recheck everything and just go over stuff. So let's let's plug these back in. So I'm plugging in the ribbon connect well, the connectors at the bottom of the game gear to make sure. Okay, and we will sit this in its case and I will plug a game in. Now there's no sound because I haven't got the front plugged in. <laughs> I can take those off now. 
My God. I'm going to spin it round so you guys can see that. Look at that. That's that's pretty damn good. That's great. Oh my gosh. I have I have surprised myself that that's worked straight away. None of the instructions matched my reference board and so I just had to go on what I could. But that's worked. That it does look great. And if I let me, hold on, let me turn this light off. Okay, there we go. Look at that. That looks so good. I'm well happy with that. That's, um, it's turned out really well. And that's given me quite a bit of confidence in having a look at my, because let's, let's, let's be fair here, kids. I have another one, okay? And this one has the same damn issue where the screen doesn't work. That that's come out so well. So I've got another game here we're gonna have a little try of. So I'll switch that off. And this one is Indiana Jones. Let's see how this one comes on. Okay, so let's lift that up so you can, guys can see. It is, it's come out, I'm, I'm very happy with the install on this and in all honesty, I will probably end up buying a second screen now to do the install on my other dead game game. But that's, that's come out great. So now I will be buying an SD card reader for my Game Gear. <laughs> I was putting off buying one because I was um, in the mind that if I can't make it work, why am I going to spend any more money on it? That it's I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, ordering one now. So payday on Friday, which is handy. That that's come out brilliantly. That's my. There's no screen issues as well. The screen's the screen's great. It's nice and vibrant, and that you can with the modifications done on the brightness uh, pot over here, you can turn the brightness down on the actual screen or make it lighter. So that's it's a nice little feature, and I will be playing with my Game Gear hopefully later on today. Let's get down to the business. So that was my Game Gear install, well, my Ga AliExpress Game Gear screen install, which has gone phenomenally better than I thought it would. So I would recommend if you have a Game Gear that's on its last legs, get your, do yourself a favor, get that, get yourself a um, an SD card as well, so you can load it up with ROMs and uh, ROMs you own, of course, and you know you, you get back into the old retro stuff the retro stuff's great and it's it's going to be around forever and it's been never going down in price game gears now are ridiculously expensive from what they were i picked up these game gears for five pound each years ago i can't buy a dead one now for below 50 quid 
So they're only going up in value. Put an LCD screen in it, over a hundred pound. So once again, thank you for joining me. If you like what you see, follow me. There'll be more videos of completely retro stuff like this in the future. So again, thanks for coming and I will catch you next stream.